Futurecast. This week on the Deep Leadership Podcast. You know, your performance, you need some energy, some fire. So what's going to feed that fire? It's going to be people, location, places, podcast. So fire up your performance. And then after that, I want you to go out and cook up those mouthwatering results you hunger for. So that means you've got to put in the work. No great meal cooks itself. So you got to put the work in. Hi, and welcome to Deep Leadership. I'm your host, John Rennie. Well, I hope all is well with you today. It is another beautiful day here in North Carolina, and I'm enjoying a hot cup of coffee from our friends at the Salty Sailor Coffee Company. Salty Sailor is a veteran-owned coffee company and is the official coffee of the Deep Leadership Podcast. Listeners get 10% off their amazing selection of fresh roasted coffee by going to SaltySailorCoffee.com and entering the code DEEP at checkout. Today's episode is also brought to you by our other sponsors, Leader Connect, Ignite Management Services, and Liberty Strength. All these sponsors help me bring these shows to you each and every week, so I highly encourage you to click on their links below and check them out. Now, in this episode of the Deep Leadership Podcast, I'm joined by Frank Kitchen, who is known as the Performance Chef. Frank shares his unique approach to motivating teams by using cooking analogies to inspire leadership and personal development. Now, if you love food and you love leadership, you're going to enjoy this unique way to look at how to develop a high-performing team. So are you ready to dive in? Let's get started. Welcome to Deep Leadership. Leadership is a people business. That's the philosophy of your podcast host, John Rennie. As a former Cold War submarine officer who spent 20 plus years leading businesses in corporate America before starting his own manufacturing business, he knows that leadership matters. Leadership matters. Are you ready for some real world actionable advice from John as well as his expert guests? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. The show starts right now. Welcome to the Deep Leadership Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Frank Kitchen. Frank is known as the Performance Chef. He is an author and keynote speaker who works with organizations to fire up the performance of their teams. All of Frank's kitchen-inspired programs are interactive learning experiences that provide teams with the proven recipes, ingredients, tools, and techniques needed to flip their mindset and cook up mouth-watering results. He is a 2022 recipient of the Certified Speaking Professionals designation from the National Speakers Association, which is the highest earned honor in the speaking industry. I'm excited to have him on the show to talk to him about his unique approach to motivating teams. So, Frank, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me here, John. Great to be here. Oh, it's great to meet you. It's an honor to, to meet you, have you on the show, and to hear about uh, what you do, because I think it's a really unique and when I saw you and I saw your material, I said, this, this is somebody I want to talk to because it's so interesting. So tell us about your journey to become a keynote speaker and why you chose to use cooking as a backdrop, because I think that's pretty exciting. Yeah, I, I like to share with people. I said I've turned uh, like 50 years of jokes into a business. I mean, that's the <laughs> simplest form to go and do it. But uh, no, quite simply... Uh, I didn't set out to be a keynote speaker or an author. It was a point of, I've always loved training and helping people. And I used to work in leadership development for college. And I was working with my students and one came in one day and goes, hey, Frank, you challenge us to live our dreams. What are you doing to live yours? And my students actually saw this in me before I ever did. And they believed in it so much, they actually reached out to a speaking agency and said, you need to contact our advisor about being a speaker. So that's where this whole speaking thing came from, I've always worked in places where I've been either a leadership role or a training role, but I never thought that it'd be a point to it. it'd get me able on stages talking to people around the world. And so you embraced your last name, Kitchen, I guess. Is that probably what the reason for the, you know, yeah. the, using cooking as a backdrop for your performance yeah. improvement messages? Well, yeah, you and you did ask that question. Yeah, I'm. I, it's <laughs> funny. That is my last name because people always will ask, like, is that really your name? And most of seem like, oh, do you own a restaurant? Are you a chef? Are you a cook? <laughs> and the, the funny piece is I did take three years of culinary in high school and considered going to culinary school. My my teacher, she's like, hey, she talked to my parents. Like, yeah, hey, I think he, he'd, he would do good at this. But uh, no, when I started speaking, I started the business. I was trying to be like everybody else, you know, the dark color suit, your arms crossing the pictures and go and do and trying to get Gallup poll numbers and facts and figures. But it became more of a lecture. And I didn't do very well. 
But when I started to embrace, as my friend said, can we get the Frank off stage on stage mm. and became, you know, who I truly am, you know, unapologetic for it, that drew people in, of which part of that was to use my last name. Because for years, people have always been going, hey, you know, what's cooking in the kitchen? You know, oh, are you going to fire things up? What's, 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 the, what's the plan? What's the recipe? So these were just all like people go, oh, man, it's a cool brand. It wasn't really forced. This is just what people have been saying to me, you know, throughout my life. And it's easy to incorporate in an interview or on stage because this is just who I am. I love that. I love the, the fact that you've embraced your name, you embraced and, and, and you created a unique, um, I mean, just a unique message uh, for for your audience. And so everyone remembers your last name. Everyone remembers what you do. And it's and it's it's brand appropriate. So I love that because I think a lot of people are working to try to stand out. How can you stand? Like you said, in the beginning, you were just like everybody else, but now you're different. And I, And I love that part about what you're doing. Well, I mean, I know you've got a lot of business owners who listen to this podcast, and that's the one thing when I when I work with entrepreneurs, because I volunteer for a couple of nonprofits, I explain to the entrepreneurs, I'm like, hey, it's like as an entrepreneur, your job isn't to blend in with the crowd, it's to stand out. I'm like, so what's that unique selling point that's going to allow you to stand out from somebody else? And that's why I throw in the kitchen puns. And I go, hey, we can drive down the street right now. I'm sure right there in Raleigh, we could drive down the street. And you and I would probably see a whole bunch of different pizza places and a whole bunch of different hamburger shops. Well, they're all the same, but this one here is the world's fastest pizza. And this one here is stone, you know, oven pizza. And this one here is, you know, farm to table pizza. They're, they're doing something to separate themselves. So it's not just the ordinary deal. So for us as business owners, as leaders, we have to recognize, sell what's different about you, share what's different about you versus what's alike. Because when we get, I know you own a business. If I come in, and give the same exact answer as everybody else. You're like, okay, I'm looking for something different. That's I've heard that answer five times. Um, we're in this AI world. And my friend was talking the other day, her daughter wrote a paper using AI. And she goes, no, go back and rewrite it. She goes, there's no soul or heart to it. She's like, you look like everybody else. Mm. That's the big thing. I think the way our world is going is we have to find that uniqueness, but we have to embrace that uniqueness and share it with the world. I love that. that that's so good. That's That's really good. I know with my business, we actually say that's our mission is that we're a different kind of supplier. And, and our, our general rule is, is if the big guys say no, we say yes. If the big, say, the big guys go here, we go up in the other direction because we want to be different than the, than the big suppliers in our industry. And we're known for it. We're known for, you know, saying yes when, when others say no. And I, and I like that, just trying to be unique and different. Um, so I think it's a great, great lesson for all you entrepreneurs listening in here. Embrace what makes you unique and uh, and stand out from the crowd, which you have done. So, so when so when organizations and groups are hiring you, what is it they're trying to achieve when they when they look at your profile? They know what kind of thing that you're going to provide. What what are they hoping to get when they hire you? Yeah, well, my my ideal client tends to be professional associations, and professional associations tend to have either a trade show, conference, convention. And they're looking for a speaker. I usually like to open up the conference. I like to set the, the tone. I like to set the energy for the event. But generally, you have either mid-level or entry-level professionals who are coming in you know, to their field, and they're not getting the proper training from their employer. So they're going to go to this professional organization to get that training they need so they can move up the ladder. So when I come in, it's a combination of my personal story, but the experiences or the proven you know, results that I have either been a part of or that I've seen. So for me, you know, you said earlier, fire up the performance of their teams. We're all judged by our performance and the results that we produce. So I want to provide people with all the needed resources to be able to hit that performance. And that just comes from my career working in retail, government, nonprofit, was many of the people when they would say, oh, that person's not performing at their best, I recognized they weren't receiving the proper tools. And that's where we put the proper te- you know, terminology when it talks about kitchen into it. Well, if you and I are going to cook up something that we hunger for, so for these people, everybody listening right now, you hunger to get better at your job. Okay, so if you're hungry for something, the first thing you say is, okay, well, what's your plan? Well, the plan is a recipe. So I say, okay, well, we got to give them a recipe. So we got to give the step by step. But from there, we need the ingredients. So the ingredients are the, the tools and the resources that you need. But even if you have all those ingredients, you have to have somebody there to mentor, coach, or teach you on the proper techniques on how to go and do it and pull it off. So that's what I come in and provide for my you know, clients is 
most of the time it's a keynote speech. Every now and then I'll come off and do a training at an organization or a company. But it's a case of, hey, I want to give you, as you said, said earlier, proven recipes, techniques, tools, and ingredients to make sure you can cook up that result that you want. The results that you want, John, are a little bit different than me, but I want to be able to provide you with the resources needed to get that result that you want. I love that. And, you know, what are, what are the kind of messages that really resonate? In other words, you know, when you say some things, you know, as part of your keynote or as when you're talking with, with, with business owners, what's, what are the, in, in, in business people, what, what are the, uh, the things that you present that really spark like, oh, shoot, that's what yeah. I need, or that's what's missing. This is what yeah. I need, uh, need to uh, hear. Are there some specific messages that are really uh, resonating at this point? Yeah, um, a couple of quotes that I share when people start to drop their heads and start writing is I'll be on stage and I'll stage in front of a group training and I go, hey, uh, what's the big dream that you hunger for? And they're thinking about it and I go, hey, the more you talk about it, the further away it gets. That shocks everybody because we're in this world now where they talk, oh, if you just keep talking about it and I go, hey, don't think about it, don't talk about it, cook it up. And that is letting people know you have to put the work in. We're, we're in the society where somebody will see you, John, like, oh, I want to be just like John. And they might put a year of work in and like, I'm not where John is. Well, how many years did John put in? Like there's, there's work that you have to go and do. And you're over here complaining about it and just talking about it. But you spent more time complaining and talking about it than actually going to a training, reading a book, you know, going to a workshop, listening to a podcast. What work are you putting in? So that's one of the ones that really gets people is, and like, the more you talk about it, the further away it gets where society is telling us now, Hey, if you talk about it and you dream it, and I like Disney, but Disney, like when you wish upon a star, the dream comes true. No, you can't wish. Wish is a passive word. You have to put in the work. You have to cook it up. You have to add the fire. So that's one that gets people going. Um, another one that really gets people going, because I know you've got a lot of leaders here, military, entrepreneurs, business. And I go, hey, um, and this, this really ch changes people's minds, but it's a servant leadership model. My father is in the military. Was I go, hey, I was like, I want all of you to be chefs. I was like, chefs are known for cooking up great results. I was like, but no chef finds satisfaction in cooking just for themselves. I was like, so whatever you go for, as far as you know, your performance base, I really want you to think about who are you serving by going for this? So if you're looking to be the next manager, going to be the next CEO, awesome. But the piece is really going to get you fired up is to think about, okay, who are all the people, who are all the lives that you get a chance to transform during this process? Don't think about just for you. I told people I always fell flat on my face when I thought just about me, but I started going, oh, this will allow me to take care of my kids. This will allow me to take care of my wife. This will allow, oh, these students to graduate and go across stage. Oh, this will allow me to train the next set of people to become managers. Cause I explained, you know, one of my mentors goes, Hey, I don't want to be judged by my sales. I want to be judged by the people I promote. These are areas that, you know, as you said, when I get brought in that I like to share with people is just going, yeah, it's not just about you. Stop talking about it. Put the work in. Let's make sure that we are, you know, <laughs> pushing ourselves through to where we want to go versus just staying in the corner, being passive and hoping that it's going to happen. I, I love that message. It's so important. Um, we do have a, we have a society where we talk about things a lot. And so there are a few people that, that actually, you know, put the, put the car in drive and, and move forward to his, towards those objectives. And even, you know, I think sometimes fear of failure is there. Like, well, I don't want to do that because I could fail. And the truth of the matter is, is that, I mean, I'm, as an entrepreneur, I've failed so many times. <laughs> That, uh, but these were, I, I say that they're, those are important lessons that I learned along the way that got me better as an entrepreneur, better as a business owner, because I had those experiences. So I always tell people that, you know, even if you fear failure, you actually shouldn't because those are valuable learning lessons that you have to have. And so you have to move forward. You have to trip and fall and you have to get up and figure it out and learn from it because that's the only way you're going to get to your, your, your end results. Exactly. Like my, my mom um, was a, you know, early childhood preschool director and I, I watched her speak to people and she goes, the greatest time of growth for a human is between zero and four. She goes, you learn 80% of what you need to survive by the time you turn four. She's like, the rest of your life, you spend perfecting it. And I, I love to share with people on stage. I'm like, yeah, same thing. Like, I was like, embrace failure. And they're like, what? Because even like my intro, it says, Frank Kitchen here is to share with you his successes and failures. I was like, most of what I speak on are my failures, telling people, don't repeat what I did. But if you think about a child, 
they fall over, they get back up, they have to learn the questions, they touch something that's too hot. They spend the first four years failing constantly, but that's the greatest time for growth. So I know so many people have been taught where to go, hey, it's like you either, you know, you either win or you grow. And someone's like, what do you mean you win and you grow? And they go, you either win or if you fail, that means you are growing. I mean, for anybody who's ever cooked, we've all burnt a meal, right? So people are like, oh my God, you cooked it so good. No, because you've burned it 10 times before. You're just seeing, you know, the evolution of the experience of what we're doing. So as you said, we, we've got to Im- embrace this failure and understand, hey, you're probably going to fail, you know, more, more than not. But when you do go and see someone like me or like you, John, I always will tell people, like, don't ask about our successes, ask about our failures. I mean, whoever's listening to this right now, I mean, that's the big thing to write down and think about is like, if there's somebody you admire, you look up to, you want to, you know, replicate their successes. When you sit down and talk with them, of which the big one is, you're just one click away now in this, you know, social media world. Like, hey, can I sit down and interview you? But when you ask them, the first question should be, is like, hey, can you tell me about all your failures? Mm. That's going to help speed up your process to get to wherever you want to do, or to, as we said, cook up these mouthwatering results, because I'll ask, what did you mess up on? Hey, boom, don't go there. I mean, you're in the military. That's the first thing the military is like, well, which way don't we, don't go in that direction because that's where they're waiting for you. Oh, okay, let's go. <laughs> to the- yeah. On a submarine, it's like, don't touch that valve. <laughs> yeah. Don't touch that <laughs> valve. Don't make that sound. What's that smell? I mean, <laughs> yeah, there's some things that we learn uh, very early on um, that don't do. There's a lot of lists of don't do on a submarine for sure. Yeah, I love that. That's that's fantastic. And, and again, I, and I appreciate that you know, the idea of like, you're going to burn a bunch of food before you get it right. And, uh, and it's a great, again, it falls into the, you know, the kitchen analogy. There's so many lessons that fall into it. I just love that you've embraced that. Oh, that's, that's, that's yeah. Great. And like each day something new comes or people will like listen to like this interview and I, I'll get a message or an email and someone's like, have you ever considered this? Have you thought about that one? I'm like, oh, wow. It's like, yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, because everybody has, we all have these kitchen analogies yeah. And, yeah. and it's funny to watch. Where, you know, I'll tell people like, hey, it's like um, a burnt meal doesn't stop you from being hungry. And they're like, what? I was like, okay. It's like, so we fail. I was like, so I was like a burnt meal. I was like, have you ever been hungry? Like, yeah. I was like, have you started cooking a meal and you burned it or overcooked it because you got distracted? They're like, yes. I was like, do you give up? They're like, no. I was like, what do you do? It's like, well, I either make it again or figure something else out. I was like, well, why can't you do that in your life? Yeah. I was like, you'll be truly hungry for something, promotion, to get into the military, to start a business, to write a book doesn't go right the first time. Okay, I quit. I'm done. It's like, then you really didn't want it. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. As a leader, you're responsible for the mission and the people assigned to you. Regardless of the size of your team, employees are depending on you for their lives and careers. For the sake of your team and the people who entrust you with this role, you need to master the skills to become a great leader. Best-selling leadership author John Rennie is proud to introduce the Qualified Leadership Book Series. This new series teaches you how to become a people-centered leader. Great leaders know that employees who are respected, appreciated, and allowed to grow will go the extra mile. These books provide real-world leadership wisdom written from a hands-on perspective. If you want to be a more effective leader, this is the one book series you should read this year. This three-book series contains the following best-selling leadership books. I Have the Watch, You Have the Watch, and All in the Same Boat for one low price of $39.99. Begin your journey to become a leader worth following. Go to johnsrenny.com and get your order in today. This episode is brought to you by Leader Connect, a leadership training company and video platform founded by the leadership book author and deep leadership podcast guest, Neil Jurd. Leader Connect is a video and podcast streaming platform for leaders and teams. Watch it alone or as a team, and each video supports you and your team, allowing you to improve performance and build a great culture. Join hundreds of experts and learn about leadership, planning, public speaking, team building, mindfulness, and a range of other subjects that will help you lead well and build a great team. I'm proud to say that I'm one of the experts on this platform. Leader Connect is offering a 10% discount to all deep leadership listeners. Go to leader-connect.co.uk and enter the code DEEP at checkout. 
Master your leadership with Leader Connect. This episode is brought to you by Ignite Management Services. Ignite is led by Mike Watson, who you might remember from episode 137. Mike and his team believe that everything starts with leadership, whether it's strategy execution or cultural transformation. It's the role of the leader to create the conditions for their people to succeed. The team at Ignite can help you develop critical habits to enhance your leadership capability and transform your business. Ignite Management is now offering the Resilient Leadership Assessment Tool. This is an online questionnaire designed to assess and guide leadership development, coaching, and team building. It provides leaders an opportunity to gain insights into their leadership strengths and development needs. After taking this assessment, you will receive a custom detailed report that provides practical and actionable recommendations to enhance your effectiveness. I have taken this assessment myself and found it to be extremely valuable in helping me make changes to my leadership approach. Right now, Ignite is offering 15% off the price of this tool to the deep leadership audience. Go to ignitemanagement.ca and enter the code START15 at checkout to get started today. This episode is brought to you by ShipStation. If you run an e-commerce business, you know how much work it takes to produce something great while dealing with complicated shipping issues. That's why over 130,000 companies have turned to ShipStation an innovative tool that allows you to focus less on shipping and more on building your brand. With ShipStation, you can manage orders, label printing, reporting, and customer service on one easy-to-use dashboard. You'll reduce warehouse costs with reliable enterprise solutions and save thousands on shipping costs with discounts up to 89% off. Plus, you can effortlessly import orders from everywhere you sell online. So, Turn your shipping challenges into opportunities for growth. Go to ShipStation.com and use code POD to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code POD. One of the things you talk about in in your your, uh, presentations is you talk about flip your mindset. And I think you even hand out spatulas, if I remember, right? Seeing online somewhere. But what, what does it mean? And what do you try to tell people when you say flip your mindset? Well, with with our mindset, I say our, our mindset is our mental cookbook. Okay. And a cookbook is full of recipes, plans, and, you know, opportunities. It's full of experiences. It's the case of, you know, some people say out of sight, out of mind. Well, when you look at a cookbook, even you can never, if you say you can't cook, you look and there's like, oh, this is a possibility. It's a book of possibilities. So for our mindset, it's the same thing. It's the, it's, you know, impacted by the people we surround ourselves with, the environments that we've been in, the experiences that we've had. And so much of what we receive on a day-to-day basis is negative. We hear constantly what we're not good at and what we can't do. So when I talk about flipping your mindset, if we were to look at a spatula right now to use cooking in your house, oh, a spatula is used to turn things over, to make sure it's cooked up properly to get the result that we want. So for us in life, we have to flip our mindsets. We have to stop thinking about what we can't do and focus on what we can. Where your mind goes, your body and your mouth will follow. And what we'll do is for so many people, we'll start to self-justify why we can't do something. We have this mindset of, you know what? I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm the wrong sex. Um, I don't have that experience. Okay, boom. But if we flip our mindset, we're going to start thinking about, oh, okay, where can I get this experience? Where can I get the knowledge? What is good about me? What experiences do I have? Where can I go? What is possible? So you're always thinking about what you can do. So when we talk about flipping your mindset, I tell people, you know, and I get the spatula out, is I'm like, hey, what's a spatula for? I was like, it's used for flipping things over. So I want you to flip your mindset. I was like, it's used for cooking things up. So put in the work. And then at the end, it's used for serving yourself and others. So how can you use whatever this dream, this passion, this goal, this purpose of yours, how can you use that to serve not only yourself, but for others? And that's where the whole flip your mindset piece is. It's just a case of, Focus more on what you can do versus what you can't. And if you're around people who are constantly saying, I can't do this, it's not there. That's part of your mindset too, is like, oh, you know what? I better get around some quote, other cooks, some other chefs, people who are working to transform that big idea into reality. Or I got to put myself in the environments, whether it means I'm listening to a podcast, I'm listening to an audio book, I'm reading a book, I'm going to a training seminar. Are you consuming the right information to give you this mindset of, a lot of people call it a growth mindset, I call it a fresh mindset, but are you thinking about what you can do? And too many of us don't do that. 
I love that. And I love that the, the message about surrounding yourself with, I always say surround yourself with people on a mission and, and you can, it'll, it'll elevate your game and, and, you know, you know, look at your friends, look at the people that you're around every day. Are they, are they, you know, growth mindset people? Are they working to become better versions on themselves or are they complaining all day long about, you know, the injustice of the world and justice and why they can't get what they need? And I think, I think if the more and more you surround yourself with people who are, or, who are trying to become better and working to, to achieve, I think, I think it really does infect you it, in a positive way. It can really yeah. help you yeah. elevate. Our mindset is, and you've been in the military, so you understand it. Our mindset is contagious. You could put one person into a unit and that person can either bring the unit down or bring the unit up. Yeah. And I'm sure you've seen that plenty of times. I'm sure you shared it on the podcast, but you have to ask yourself, okay, with your attitude, your mindset, you know, how's it impacting the people around you? Yeah. 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 No, attitude is contagious for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially in a locked in a metal tube <laughs> for, for three months at a time. <laughs> no windows. Yeah. <laughs> so you do talk about um, this idea of a, of a fresh recipe. Uh, mm -hmm. You use the term fresh. Yeah. There's five elements to this, to the fresh recipe. Can you just tell us about a few of those and, and, and what they mean and why, why you stress those when you, when you give your talks? Yeah. So with my talks, I told people is like fresh is your signature recipe for these mouthwatering results. It's how you craft the mindset. So the five letters F R E S H are what we're doing to craft the mindset needed to cook up the results we hunger for. And the ultimate pieces, it comes from my story from my diary of why I fell flat on my face for years. Number one, I wasn't focused. So we have to quote live focused. I want people to live fresh. So we have to live focused. What do you want? When you and I are hungry, we can explain in detail what we want, what restaurant we want to go to, what we want, exactly what's on it. And guess what? When we can explain it in clear detail, very focused, not only does it motivate and inspire us, it gets other people. Like they'll have that food ordered and waiting for you before you even get there because they know exactly which one. So we got to be focused. Uh, from there, we got to be resourceful. Uh, we've become this nation and world of complaining and blaming. And I said, you know what? We got to get resourceful. Think about what we have versus what we don't have. And many times we may not have all the resources or ingredients we need, but we do have people in our lives who probably have the answers to our questions. So you've got to get resourceful and focus on, okay, well, what can I go and do? When we're cooking up a meal, and if we don't have an ingredient there, we will find a substitute. We'll make, go talk to the neighbor. We might run out for a last second grocery store run, but we're being resourceful. From there, it's the E, it's enthusiastic. If you're not excited about what you're going for, then you're going to have no energy. And I share with people, the way our mind is designed, it's designed to prevent us from getting hurt or stressing ourselves. So we may have to trick our mind. So when we're going to go on a vacation, right, John? We get very productive those last 24 to 48 hours. We get all the yes. work done, bills, trash taken out, away message, email sit. We, we get it done because what we're doing now is we're focusing on the result. And I always share with people, it's like the emotion of the result has to be stronger than the emotion of the work because mm. nobody wants to work. <laughs> But if we're going on vacation and we're going to have our toes in the sand somewhere with an adult beverage in our hand, that motivates us. So we have to start thinking, it's like, okay, what's the result? I get to watch my kids walk at home. I get to go put my kid through college. I get to have the house here, get to go on a vacation. I get to help my mom and dad. Think about those pieces first, and that'll help you do the work. I'm in a job where I got to make phone calls and emails all day. It's a sales job. That's not exciting. Understanding, oh, this is going to allow me time to go help coach my son's baseball team. That's exciting. So that helps me put in the work. Uh, from there, we got to go with the S. Got to stay mentally strong. What are we consuming on a day-to-day -day basis? Where your mind goes, your body follows. So what are you reading? What are you watching? Who are you hanging yourself out with? Are they strong-minded strong people or not? So mentally strong. And the last piece, which is the most important one, is you got to be honest and you got to be honest with yourself. And the first way to be honest with yourself is, are you willing to ask for help? We're in this world of self-help books. Go online, do it yourself. And nobody does anything by themselves. I'm here doing this interview right now. There's about a team of 20 people who would help me out with my business. I wouldn't be here without them. It's accountability partners. It's a CPA. It's a marketing guy, a website person. Are you willing to ask for help? Are you helping the process of living your dreams? Are you hurting the process? You got to be honest with yourself. And that's what happens when we make a recipe. We actually have a self-reflection point of saying, okay, here's what worked. Here's what didn't work. So we have to have this point where we have to be honest with ourselves and reflect of, hey, can I do this? Did I not do it? Am I doing things wrong? So that's fresh. F-R-E-S-H, focus, resourceful, enthusiastic, strong, and honest. 
I love it. It's just a simple, simple message. It makes a lot of sense. And uh, yeah, I mean, every one of those elements is something we've talked about on the show somewhere along the along the way, you know, and, and it's, a, it's an important part of success, right? All those elements are an important part of success. I do like the idea that you mentioned, you know, strong and how do you surround yourself with, or, you know, surround yourself with people, but feeding your mind. I always say that, you know, what you feed your mind is, 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 is really going to affect you. And I think a lot of, a lot of, we, we see a lot of depression. We see a lot of anxiety these days. And I think it's because we're, we're filling our mind with, you know, garbage. I, I, I often say not everybody's listening to leadership podcasts. I, I wish they would, but everyone's, you know, but it, so, but we're like health food, like, you know, talking about how to get better as a leader is health food. And it, and it doesn't maybe taste as good as maybe, you know, a silly podcast with a couple of comedians laughing and whatever, but, but, uh, that's sort of junk food and it's okay. It's entertaining, but it's that, it's not, it's not helping you get better. And, and so I really do think that it's the, the really, you know, what we feed our minds helps really strengthen us. Yeah. And it starts at the beginning of the day. I mean, for everybody listening right now, it's like, what do you do when you first wake up? I'm like, do you wake up and go straight to email, social media, sports? You talk about these things in your life that are so important, but the first thing you do when you jump out of bed is you, you feed yourself a mental cupcake yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, you, you're putting the junk in, but it's like the first 30 minutes of your day should be for that big dream that you hunger for. I mean, so if you're talking about getting better health, are you waking up to go work out or go walk around? You're, oh, finances. Okay. Are you reading a book on finance or listening to a podcast on finance? I want to be a better leader. Are we listening to your podcast or reading one of your books? If you're not starting the day off with something that you say is truly important to you, then guess what? You might need to look in the mirror because I always share with people, it's like the person who most impacts you having the ability to cook up the dreams you hunger for, looks at you in the mirror every day. So before you go and blame and complain people, you have to go look at yourself being very honest right now and say, hey, <laughs> am I helping this process or hurting it? Okay, I woke up, said everything's so important to me. And the first thing I did was I spent 30 minutes scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, and the scrolls up, up and down. Up, oh, 45 minutes is done. Now I got to go to work. You had 45 minutes to commit to something that's important to you. Mm -hmm. that's, there's nobody else's fault on that one than the person who's looking at you right now in the camera or, you know, in the mirror. I love that. Don't waste your time on mental cupcakes. Mm -hmm. that's, <laughs> a great, that's a great expression. I absolutely love that. I think I was reading in somewhere along the way in your material, I saw something about taste testers. What, what, who are taste testers in, in our organization and where we're around, the people are around? Yeah, well, well, taste testers, like it's a it's a literal and figurative piece. But if you and I are somewhere in a kitchen right now and we're cooking up a meal, everybody's waiting for us, we got a party. I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm making the world's greatest baked beans and it's got to taste like this and go and do. Well, you're going to be my taste tester. Now I've been focused to explain to you exactly the result that I want. But now I have to be willing to trust you, which means I got to listen to you. I'm like, hey, go, go get a sample, get a taste. And you're going to taste it like Frank needs a little bit more sugar, a little more salt, pepper, whatever it is. I'm going to take that feedback and then go reapply it. So taste testers are people that you know, that you trust, but more importantly, you're willing to listen to their feedback. Because a lot of people in life will give us advice and feedback and we don't even listen to them. So your taste testers, it's a small group. I usually tell people it's about, you know, four people. It's not really a lot but they're essentially an accountability partner for you. You're going to explain to them exactly the result that you're working to cook up. You're going to meet with them consistently. You're going to ask them for free feedback on what you're doing. You'll course correct during that process, and then you'll go. They might tell you, hey, it's good, fine. You know, These are people who aren't going to blow smoke up your you-know-what, but these are people where it's like, hey, they're going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear, because they value the results that you want just as much as you do. I love that. Yeah, that's a great, a great analogy. I like the, I like the term taste testers, and it's someone trusted. It's, it's someone that you can bounce ideas off of. It's someone that give you honest feedback, and, uh, and you need that in your life. Absolutely important. This is fantastic, Frank. Um, what final message would you like to leave with our listeners right now? The, the final message is we've been kind of talking it right now. So you started off was when I walk off a stage, I always explain to people, I said, hey, I was like, I want you to number one, flip your mindset. I was like, I want you to focus on what you can do. Once you flip your mindset, I was like, I want you to fire up your performance. You know, your performance, you need some energy, some fire. So what's going to feed that fire? It's going to be people, location, places, podcasts. So fire up your performance. And then after that, I want you to go out and cook up those mouthwatering results you hunger for. So it means you've got to put in the work. No great meal cooks itself. So you got to put the work in. And that's what we're just talking about today. Have the right mindset, 
find the resources that you need to fuel that fire in your head and then put the work in and then, you know what, serve it up to the world. That's, that's the piece I love sharing with people. Such a fantastic uh, way to, uh, to, to, to put this information out. It's so easy to understand. And there's so much wisdom behind uh, these analogies that, uh, that it really makes sense. It's really a powerful message. Um, yeah, so I, I, th- I think it's really important that, that listeners, that you hear this, uh, you take it to heart. I think the, I, there's lots of ideas um, that uh, Frank has brought in here that really can help you, you know, get better in your career, get better in your business, get better uh, just in life in general. So these are just great practical advice. Frank, how can our listeners find out more about you, uh, all your books? We didn't really talk about your books, but you've got a couple of books uh, as well, yeah. and all your services. Where can they find out more about you? Yeah, well, the surprise is I didn't talk to you. I actually just finished up a third book today. Oh, nice. It's actually called Flip Your Mindset, 30 Activities to Fire Up Your Performance. So it's going to be a little workbook just as kind of walking down what we talked today. That should be out here in April. Just got to go do some final editing. But uh, the big one to find me is like, there's only one of me out there. Like you said, I'm unique. So if you just go look up frankkitchen.com. So Frank Kitchen spelled just like the room. K-I-T-C-H-E-N. I have to say that because people always like, well, how do you spell it? I'm like the room in your house. How do you spell it? So frankkitchen.com. Um, but if you just type in Frank Kitchen on Google or whatever, usually you will find a picture of me. On the website, you'll find free resources, connection to YouTube channel, podcast interviews, uh, worksheets. They'll all be on there. And then uh, my contact information is on there also. So any way I can be a resource to people after listening to this podcast, you got more questions, you want to find out about the books and coaching programs, they're all on the website. Just go there, check it out. And I hope I can be your performance chef. That's fantastic. Again, listeners, I highly encourage if there's something in this message that really resonated, reach out to Frank. We'll have his resources. The links are in the show notes here. Reach out to him. Talk to him. If you've got an organizational uh, get together and you need a keynote speaker and you want someone to fire up the crowd, I can tell you that Frank will fire you up. <laughs> he will He will get you excited. Uh, get, he's got a high energy, highly qualified keynote speaker. If you've got an event, you've got an organizational event, uh, you need a keynote speaker, Frank's the guy you want to get. If you want to uh, just get everybody excited, get everybody focused, and have a fun talking about things in the kitchen, because I think it's been, it's kind of a neat uh, neat analogy, and just about just about anything related to what we talked about has a, some sort of a eating and cooking analogy, which I think is, is really creative and uh, neat the way you've done it. So, Frank, I want to thank you for coming on the show and sharing uh, your experience and sharing uh, the way you energize crowds and and the way you, the things you teach people. I really appreciate your time and coming on the show and sharing what you do. Yeah, um, just you know, thank you so much for you know inviting me here. And as you said, as a fellow business owner and speaker, and I'm seeing the side behind you. Yeah, we're all in the same boat. I mean, the case is there's something that we want. I'll do some nautical analogies. We're all trying to you know get out to sea. We don't want the rough waters. And we just have to, you know, work together to, you know, make this happen. And one of the things is just sharing information and having a conversation like we did today. So thank you so much for having me out. Absolutely. Fantastic. So thanks. Thanks again. Well, thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and share so we can continue to build a world with better bosses. Until next time, this is John Rennie saying take care and lead well. Thank you for listening to Deep Leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all you do. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit our website at www.deepleadershippodcast.com or johnsrenny.com. Until next time, take care. Hi, I'm Lessa Cadet, host of her Extraordinary Life by Design podcast, where we celebrate women who are shaping their lives one extraordinary day at a time. I speak with women from all over the world about what they do and how they are passionately pursuing their dreams and creating meaningful impacts on their communities. So come join us and learn about all there is to learn about these extraordinary women. Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Peter. We're the founders of Electrocast Media, bringing you great podcasts like Nightmare Road Stories, Tech Talk Revolution, and Bodacious Minds. Electrocast Networks include Ruby for female empowerment, the best business network, and GPN for geopolitics. We built this company to create community and amplify diverse voices, and we really appreciate your support. So, keep listening to Electrocast Podcasts and hear the culture.
Electric acid. 